could there be the remnant of a now lost, yet once global super civilization still hidden across the United States? When we first began the channel, we covered the astonishing ancient megaliths that can be found within Montana. We soon came under attack from false DMCA claims surrounding this specific subject, which at the time nearly took out the channel. It would seem that the powers that be would have rather kept a lid on these ancient sites, which not only predate Native Americans, but demonstrate to the world the past capabilities of a now lost civilization. Like the falling block within Wyoming, still argued as a geological formation, the tool marks upon the falling block matching up to those found within Gornaya Shoria, Aswan Quarry, Bazda Caves in Turkey and so on. What we have coined cup and scoop marks, these tools most synonymous with the unfinished obelisk. However, it is always helpful to find more sites a bit closer to home, ones which will support each other's artificial origins and corroborating their methodology of creation. Not only supporting the posit of the falling block being an ancient abandoned megalith, similar in origins to the stone of the pregnant woman, but furthering our understanding of the reach of this now lost civilization. With this fortunately being the case in Utah, where we may have stumbled upon the source quarry for Wyoming's falling block, a site spared modern excavation and or destruction due to its inconspicuous natural appearance. Its true purpose, visible only to those who understand the methods of ancient stone extraction and indeed are looking for it. This cut block quarrying being a technique not only still used with modern machinery within modern quarries, but is visible worldwide in countless other ancient and abandoned quarries, such as Olantai Tambo, or indeed throughout Peru. Located at Muley Point, this prehistoric quarry of gigantic proportions shares some startling similarities to those of Aswan, Easter Island, China, and so on, all abruptly abandoned, all moving, cutting, and shaping monstrous rocks, sizes which we would struggle to move today, once lending support to the geological angle, yet their similarities and artificial man-made characteristics undeniable. For these formations to all appear in such close proximity, each sharing the same artificial characteristics, ignored in favor of this geological argument, we feel is clear evidence of a conspiracy. Yet, I digress. To assume that a civilization seemingly capable of scooping out solid stone did not possess advanced technology, we feel is a mistake. To presume that this civilization, with all these evident capabilities and similarities in construction methods found globally, were not seafaring, world-going peoples, we feel, is becoming more and more the ignorant choice in regard to lost antiquity day by day. To dismiss such a hypothesis in favor of putting the mounting and already mountainous evidence in support down to coincidence, becoming more and more suspicious, especially from academic fields, what happened to this civilization? What could they have been building? Why was everything within ancient times built to such gigantic proportions? Was this civilization larger in scale than us, or just incredibly capable? Wanting to create a legacy they knew would be lost, but they desired to be rediscovered. If so, why? Are there even more astonishing pre-flood ruins and indeed megalithic quarries still hidden across the United States? We find the possibilities highly compelling. Wyoming is a very curious place when it comes to historical anomalies. It is particularly rich with peculiar oparts. The rock art that spans many millennia of man's history, handprints seemingly melted into the solid stone within the white rocks of White Mountain, or indeed the falling block. Although the name would suggest that this block is in a precarious position, it is in fact unliberated from the bedrock unquestionably reminiscent of the countless abruptly abandoned mines and quarries places such as Aswan in Egypt, Yangshan in China, Easter Island's El Gigante, and so on. Regardless, it is hastily dismissed as a geological formation, its compelling characteristics, however, cannot be denied. Its unnatural shape, its level top, its out-of-place appearance, as if placed there or as if it had fallen from the sky. Not to mention the curious symmetrical patterning on certain sides, the same possible tool marks we have previously identified on stones, within such gigantic megalithic sites as that of Gornea Shoria, another site littered with similarly sized blocks that are also argued as natural, yet the artificial characteristics present at the site would make this explanation unlikely. 
Located in the eastern part of the Bighorn, in a plateau northwest of the dihedral's wall, predictably little official study has been published in regard to the falling rock, although it is well known within rock climbing circles, indeed due to its symmetrical and seemingly worked shape, making it great for practice before taking on the bigger climbs. If such an object were to be located upon the surface of Mars, for example, it would undoubtedly create a flurry of interest due to its clearly artificial-esque form, yet because it is on Earth, and the truth of our past has been lost or worse hidden, it is simply ignored in favor of a more digestible and easier explanation. A dismissal of other possibilities, most probably made without any in-depth study being done on the area in line with such a hypothesis. It simply does not give one a sense of authority to say that they do not know. Additionally, during our research, we stumbled upon the medicine wheel, formerly known as the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. Paradoxically, it is argued as an indigenous artifact. This regardless of the open fact that no indigenous people have publicly claimed to have built the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. During negotiations to include the Bighorn Medicine Wheel to the Registry for National Historic Landmark and Sacred Site status, the Crow indicated that the wheel was already present when they came into the area. What do you feel about the peculiarities within Wyoming? Do you believe some were left by a lost civilization, particularly the falling rock? We find the falling rock, and indeed the history within Wyoming as a whole, highly compelling. Cave paintings and petroglyphs are undoubtedly some of the oldest and most interesting artworks found anywhere on Earth. Some of these artworks found within the unforgiving terrain of the Great Outback within Australia, for example, have been dated at well over 10,000 years old. Illustrations in ochre that show many of the animals our distant ancestors loved or hunted, along with many other forms of artistic recreation. Like a time capsule allowing us to travel back to peek into the minds of ancient man. Although these ancient artworks are undoubtedly important to our understanding of ancient man, there exists a number of other petroglyphs that are considerably different to these primitive achievements. Found within the White Mountain of Wyoming, there are a number of petroglyphic carvings that were seemingly made with nothing else than our ancestors' hands. These deep-set handprints were somehow left within solid sandstone, as if created by softening the rocks with their minds, hands, or perhaps voices alone. How did an ancient people manage to create these marks? Did our ancient ancestors somehow figure out how to soften stone? There are many sites all around the world which possess similarly enigmatic marks. Were they left by individuals capable of softening stone, or perhaps left upon the stones while not fully formed? To melt or soften stone requires immense heat, that which is usually only found within the center of the earth, or indeed the lava flows which spew forth from its core. One interesting theory regarding the possible softening of stones, created far back within antiquity, was initially discovered still been surviving within the minds of locals who surround the ancient sites of Peru, most notably Sacsayhuaman. A theory put forth to explain the shaping of stones within the fortress, regarded as a local legend by the first explorers of these sites. Percy Fawcett, as well as Hiram Bingham, who actually rediscovered Machu Picchu, noted that it was a liquid derived from plants, which was apparently known to the ancients to turn stone soft. In fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest attested to using the technique, actually achieving the softening of solid stones, although he was apparently unable to return the resulting flurry back to solid stone. Furthermore, according to other researchers, Jan Peter de Jong, Christopher Jordan, and Jesus Gamera, among others, ancient walls within Cusco show evidence that ancient cultures used very high temperatures to shape them. 
This unknown process vitrified the surface of the blocks, turning them to glass. Based on these observations, Zhang, Jordan, and Gomera speculated that ancient man possessed an advanced device which somehow allowed them to melt stone blocks. And although the petroglyphs of the White Mountains are yet to be fully studied by anyone, we feel they are probably the strongest piece of evidence of this lost process. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. We recently shared some compelling evidence suggesting that a number of megalithic sites dotted all around the world are far older than the civilizations claimed as the builders. The pregnant woman of Baalbek, for example, a megalithic stone many attribute as the largest ever man-moved stone. And although many stones slightly lighter can be found effortlessly placed within ancient structures everywhere, academia stresses that it couldn't be moved any further. The same can be seen with Yangshan Quarry in China. China! Home to the largest known cut megalith in the world. Again, academia suggests that this stone was abandoned due to its size, completely ignoring the enigmatic notches, indicating that the entire shape of these enormous rocks had actually been carved prior to their attempted liberation from the bedrock. They insisted that it was abandoned suddenly, not due to unknown circumstances, but due to them not able to move them. And although the ancient Egyptians, and better known, seagoing Romans themselves, claimed ownership to many of these perplexing structures with impossible architecture and clearly displaying a severe level of erosion, there are some sites coming to light which have seemingly been left to the eons, never again being claimed as another's work. Deep within the southern wildernesses of Siberia lies the mountain of Shoria. Rarely visited by humans, and even less frequently studied, this remote mountain, however, was a few years ago, discovered to be the home of something astonishing. Now known as the Gornaya Shoria megaliths, their truly astonishing enormity has made it hard for certain fields of study to even give this place a second glance. And although some of the structure now revealed to the world through photographs clearly shows that these remarkable stone walls have indeed an artificial origin, the few funded individuals who have looked at the site have still somehow had the audacity to claim that it is nothing more than a geological formation. Made with stone bricks many times larger than the stone of the pregnant woman, and with them reaching high up into the heavens far above the tree lines, one has to wonder who could have built this cyclopean wall? When did they build it? How did they build it? Where did such enormous stones come from? With such enormous structural blocks, it is no surprise that this mind-boggling structure has survived the tests of time. Was this enormous structure built when the climates of Siberia were much milder? It is important to note, as if we have suggested many times, an ancient, advanced, stone-working civilization once thrived here on Earth many, many years ago. Many of their smaller stone structures would have slowly eroded away, until now appearing to be nothing more than geological. A convenient circumstance for funded geologists, yet not a viable explanation for a site made from 4,000-plus ton granite blocks, thus exceptionally resilient to the elements. A remarkable location, one which needs serious archaeological explorations in search of remains, so we may one day ascertain the true builders of this amazing place. We recently covered the perplexing, yet little shared ancient artifact which can be found at the ancient site of Patara. We covered the fact that some of the inventions accredited to the Romans within the modern day may have been borrowed concepts with origins located far within our distant past. As with the supposed ancient Egyptian sites on the Giza Plateau, many ancient ruins contain megalithic blocks, whose movement into position not only evades modern explanation, but lacks any detailed recording of the mammoth task by any of these so-called culprits for construction. Rather, it seems a worldwide conspiracy has occurred. It is well known that history is written by the victor. 
Maybe this is a fitting explanation for the academic ignorance witnessed on a daily basis. The Baalbek Trilithon a group of three horizontally lying stones which form part of the podium of the Roman Jupiter Temple of Baalbek, Lebanon. Numerous archaeological expeditions have gone to the site, starting in the 19th century, primarily German and French groups, and research continued into the 20th century. Each of these stones is 70 feet long, 14 feet high, and 10 feet thick, weighing around 800 tons each, and conveniently, each of these modern academic studies concluded the same thing, completely absent of any explanation as to their placement. The entire foundation of this ancient structure is unexplainable, with a number of stones weighing over 350 tons, thus indicative of lost knowledge, not modern architecture. It should seem obvious that to declare otherwise would be foolish, yet this is what's witnessed all over the earth every day and we are yet to mention the world-famous, yet equally perplexing, Stone of the Pregnant Woman, also at Baalbek, and weighing in at an astonishing 1,000 tons. As Yuri Muzik put it, quote, In 27 BC, the Roman Emperor Augustus supposedly took the unfathomable decision to build in the middle of nowhere, the grandest and mightiest temple of antiquity, having no obvious reasons for selecting Baalbek as the temple's building site. The much greater erosion of the big Baalbek blocks qualifies as material proof of their much greater age." End quote. It seems that as we suspected, the evidence is mounting to support the far more logical claim that an advanced lost civilization's heritage has been stolen by different, more modern civilization all over the world. A great civilization did once flourish here on Earth, one which has been actively suppressed, stolen from, exploited, and hidden for far too long. Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder, and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony, becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs, however as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites, the little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques, which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Pumapunka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization, rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society, sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Talmud. Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible. The tribe of Talmud, said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah. However, the Talmud were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent Prophet Salih to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? 
remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools, or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people, whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it here upon our planet. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.